friends in the interwebs, Joy here with SubRosaTea.com. How's everyone today? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about growing your own tea plants. Absolutely. Friends, if you are new here, I want to welcome you. Today is a special Thursday edition. On Thursdays, I love to give away a free tea. How can you get free tea, you might say? Well, stay tuned. All you really have to do is comment. Elizabeth did. Elizabeth and Jennifer are over on the app. So Thirsty Thursdays and free tea, that's what I call them here at Sub Rosa Tea. Typically, you can find me doing live videos on both Sundays and Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If there's no red above my head, that simply means you're watching it on the replay. Feel free to use the hashtag replay and shop as you normally would. Like I said, I do videos normally twice a week, and on Thursdays, I love to give away free tea. How are you going to earn that free tea? Well, let me tell you, it's going to be a credit that I put into your account. How do you get an account? You can download our free app. The instructions are right over my head. If you cannot see those instructions, please tap my nose. It'll expand the video to your full viewing screen. You should be able to see words above my head and, of course, the flowers and plants on my countertop. So like I said, today's topic is how to grow and should you grow tea for yourself. Tea, of course, that you want to drink and tea that you could use for cooking. Thank you, Elizabeth, so much for going to Facebook and spilling the tea. I really appreciate it. We're a really small company. And when you are on social media and you comment, it helps more people to see our videos. And I do love to reward people who help us out as a small company. If you've been around a while, you know that we do have themed collections. We're kind of known for that. Um, and right now we are featuring our Spring into Easter collection. So if you are watching this on the replay, we might not have the collection available anymore. You know, videos on YouTube seem to be watched far in the future, but I, I, I bet that a lot of this information will become useful to you. And I want to give you just enough information to decide if growing your own tea plants is something that you want to do. Keep in mind, I am going to go pretty fast. If you decide not to grow your own, we do have lots of tea, and I'll be talking about that as well. I personally do not garden. I do not have a green thumb, so I will be relaying really useful information to you, but I want you to know what I do do here at Sub Rosa Tea. I consider myself the CFO. That's the Chief Flavor Officer. So I'm extremely knowledgeable about all of the plants that I'll be talking about today. I am very interested in how and where they are grown and when they are grown. And like I said, how. How is really important. And also how, of course, I can use the plant to its fullest extent in the tea that we sell. So I want to say hi to everyone. I love it when you're on time. I love it when you're all here. Thank you so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. I see plenty of people watching over on the Facebook page and, of course, on the mobile shopping app as well. If you're watching on the app, that definitely means you have an account, so don't you worry. And of course, if you haven't used that coupon code yet, you can still use it. It's new15 to get 15% off an in-app purchase. Hey, Vanessa. She said that this sounds like so much fun. Okay, first question. Oh, yes. First, I wanted to explain the rules. So the way you are eligible for free tea during these videos is you need to comment. So I do tend to ask somewhat silly questions that might not pertain to you, but trust me, there's no wrong and no right answer. I'm simply asking a question for engagement. So don't feel silly about answering. It's totally okay. First question, of course, I have to ask. Green thumb or brown thumb? What do you have? Leave me a comment. I would love to know who my gardeners are out in today's audience who's watching live. Like I said, I don't have a green thumb, but also right now I am super busy running my business. I should not be in control of growing anything. I happen to be what I consider to be a whole foods chef. Technically, I really only cook for myself, 
using Whole Foods. So I do not tend to buy anything in a bag, can, or box. I start from scratch. I start from the main ingredient. And that is kind of how my love for tea grew. I wanted to make sure I was knowledgeable about the plants that I'm using. And I'm using plant as like a general term, like the word tea. So we use leaves, stems, roots, berries, flowers. It's all encompassing. Okay, I do see I've got people who grow inside and not outside. People who grow outside but not inside. I do see some brown thumbs. <laughs> Vanessa just says that she's killed a cactus but her husband has a green thumb and we've got some people right in the middle. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate your honest answers. I did want to know because you know what? Even if you haven't started yet, I say it's never too late. Same with drinking tea, right? You got to start somewhere. So a tea garden might be the perfect place for you to start. Honestly, herbs are tend to be quite easy to grow. And in today's video, I am only going to be talking about plants that are easy to grow. There are multiple things that are not easy to grow, but that is not going to be my focus in today's video. I don't want to tempt you quite that much. Like I said, we are a small company. We are based in Northern Ohio. So tea doesn't necessarily grow in Northern Ohio terribly well. I mean outside. If you didn't know, in Northern Ohio, we tend to have four seasons. So we definitely get snow in the winter time. We have nice fall weather where um, all the leaves. We have trees that drop their leaves because there's just no point in carrying on. I don't know. It's not all that dramatic, but I happen to like the seasons. But there's definitely a good reason for that. So first of all, can you grow tea at home? I'm going to say the answer is yes and no. How can that be? Well, first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Tea does not <laughs> in America we call everything that you steep tea but technically the tea plant Camilla census only grows not here <laughs> not in America I know my audience are all Americans so can you grow the tea plant in your backyard yes should you though <laughs> Should you? It definitely loves a higher elevation than we have here in the United States, and it loves a lot of rainfall. It's very, very specific. And of course, the tea plant itself gives us black, oolong, purple, green, white, yellow teas. That tea plant, best to leave to the experts. So I hate to disappoint you. However, like I said, here in America, anything you steep, we call it tea. So today's tea time focus is can you grow tea at home? I say absolutely. As you can see, I've got many teas here, many beautiful plants. You can absolutely grow a cup of tea at home. Okay, next question. Next question. Anybody have a tea garden? Is there anybody out there? I hate to get no answers, but there might be somebody watching today that already has grown tea. Today in the queue, I've got 11 different plants that I want to talk about. I am going to talk awfully fast. It's okay if you've never tried your hand at a tea garden. I have known plenty of people who have tried, but I don't know anyone except a professional gardener, of course, um, who can. I will also say that while I have nothing against you going to a mega mart, I will absolutely encourage you to seek out a local, smaller, locally owned greenhouse for some local advice. I have got customers who are nationwide, from Maine to California, from Alaska to Florida. All of you have different climates, different environments, different humidity, different soil. So I'm just going to gloss over the pros and cons to help you decide, do I want to go down this path to grow my own tea? Or maybe do I just want to skip it and buy it from Joy at Sub Rosa? Okay, Catherine says that she's grown chamomile and mint. Molly, I've only grown lemon balm and lavender. Hey, that's two. I say go with it, right? Okay, Vanessa says, nope, but I made lilac lemonade with our lilacs. Hey, hey, absolutely. 
absolutely. That sounds fabulous. So the very first thing we're going to talk about, friends, are chamomile plants. Before that, I did want to say are tea plants perennial? The plants that we're going to talk about are yes, and are they easy to grow? Again, that's a definite yes. So it also really depends on the type of plant that you're trying to grow and of course where you live, whether they are perennial or annual. So again, I'm going to try to just, just uh, focus on a micro thing. Also, I'm going to go really fast. Keep in mind that on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, our website, you can always watch these videos on the replay. And of course, you can watch um, the replay on the mobile shopping app as well. When the video is done, I will pick a bunch of people who are watching live, put you all into a cart, um, pick a, a bunch of people from everyone who's watching, who has commented, and put cash into your cart. It normally takes me about 15 to 20 minutes after the video is over. So don't worry if I don't pick you this time, there's always next time. Before I go on any further about this though, because I have so many people watching, I wanted to again say thank you for that. I appreciate you watching live, but also make sure you've marked your calendars for Sunday, April 24th. We've got our Willy Wonka collection coming out and so many of you are super excited about that but I I know a lot of you are watching on the app and this is why I'm telling you April 24th all of you watching on the app will have the opportunity to buy something very very special a very special treasure from the Willy Wonka collection and I only have a handful of them so those of you who are on the app you will get first dibs on that I didn't want to forget to tell you in case I don't see you on Easter Sunday I do plan on doing a video on Easter Sunday I'm going to do mocktails and cocktails with our spring into Easter collection, so super fun, but I will not be live next Thursday because we'll be prepping for Willy Wonka on the 24th. So just wanted to make sure I said all of that so I didn't forget at the end. First up, friends, we're going to talk about chamomile. If you did not know, we do sell chamomile by itself. Oh my gosh, I don't have the thing. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway. I think everyone is, uh, no one's new here yet, but in case you didn't know, we do sell three sizes of our tea. So that's going to help you a little bit. Friends, chamomile is known to boost immunity, ease cold systems, and of course, soothe a stomach ache. Those are all really good reasons, all encompassing a great reason for you to consider growing your own chamomile. There's two types of chamomile that can be grown in the United States. Roman chamomile is a perennial and it can be grown from either a plant or a seed. German chamomile is an annual and it self sows, which is fabulous. It's an easy herb to grow. It's we technically harvest the flower and it can be grown in part shade or for full sun, but it does prefer cool conditions. This is our chamomile vanilla bean. We actually have a lot of chamomile flavors and one of them right now is seasonal. So this one is extremely floral. This is our eternal spring. Eternal Spring is part of our Spring into Easter collection. It does have chamomile, rose, and jasmine. We do have our chamomile vanilla bean, which is the one that I just showed you in the little cup. Very traditional, nice, and smooth with the vanilla bean. Next up, has anyone ever tried to grow mint? Oh my goodness, I think if you've ever tried, you absolutely know that there is something to be said about how easy mint grows. It's very, very easy to grow mint. There are so many different flavors of mint though. So the biggest problem with growing mint is deciding which one to grow. There's peppermint and spearmint, apple mint, chocolate mint. So the best mint to grow is really the flavor that you like. They do grow really well in both the shade and the sun. They do prefer a mint plant prefers soil that drains. Minimal care is needed, but my biggest advice, this is the one you must remember, is to grow it in a pot. 
mint spreads like crazy. You will have so much of it. You will be dying to give it away to absolutely everybody you know. So I think a lot of people have received a mint plant at one point because somebody got carried away and just had way too much. So we do sell peppermint um, here at Sub Rosa Tea. We do sell peppermint just by itself. This is just the peppermint plant. I don't know about you, but peppermint kind of, um, you know, strikes me as something like maybe seasonal at Christmas time, but we sell peppermint all year. It's very, very popular. One of our other popular flavors is cucumber mojito. This tea has lime and peppermint. Lime and peppermint. Vanessa says, we didn't try to grow the mint, but it's everywhere in our house. I totally agree. That's exactly what mint does. But if you like it, you like it, and you'll be thankful. Next up, friends, is our Sleeping Beauty. Now, Sleeping Beauty happens to have both chamomile, vanilla, and peppermint. So we're already talking about teas that have two. A tea that also has two is our Peace of Mind. This is chamomile with spearmint and orange peel. Okay, I know I see a bunch of ladies. I don't see any fellas here today, but I know fellas do have green thumbs. I just don't happen to see any watching the live video. So tell me about this. Who's got roses? Roses are very commonly grown in gardens. Roses are pretty easy to grow. They have wonderful taste and aroma. Of course, I think it's absolutely heaven. In tea, you can use the rose leaves, the buds, the petals, and of course the rose hips, all to make tea. Now, most roses are yellowable, edible, but of course we do recommend both the yellow and the pink roses. Those are going to be normally easier to grow, of course, depending on where you live, but they also have more flavor and more fragrance. So you got to love the reward on that one. You're going to want to make sure that you cut the white part of the petal before you dry it to make your tea because that's the part that can make it bitter. Oh, Chris says she has lots of roses and Elizabeth is, oh, he, the he is watching through the phone, which I love. Oh, Melissa, I do have rose bushes, have only killed one. Well, that sounds good. And Kayla inherited some roses. So, you know, roses are one of those things. Again, you've got to make sure that you definitely watch those thorns. If growing roses isn't for you, we do have a beautiful seasonal tea. Mango rose is a part of our spring into Easter collection. And if you're not watching this before Easter, I will tell you about our good fortune, which we do carry all year. This is a white tea that has rose and jasmine. Next up, friends, next up are elderberries. Now, elderberries are native to North America. They do grow in the wild. They produce both edible flowers and the berries, of course, that you see here. Berries contain, the elderberries contain more vitamin C than oranges, and they are, of course, used to help boost your immune system. We do sell both elderberries and elderberry syrup. So if you decide not to grow your own elderberry plants, I've got you covered. Here at Sub Rosa Tea, a lot of the things that I'm talking to you about today, we sell as something called an add-on. It is a tea that you can absolutely steep on its own, like the elderberries. You can just throw hot water over it and it'll be delicious. But because it is so good for your immune system, my theory by calling it an add-on is that you may wish to add a heavy pinch of elderberries to every cup of tea that you drink to help you get those immune boosting vitamins in every single cup of tea. So if you think um, elderberries just aren't for you or it's too boring, but you do have your favorite teas, add that pinch. You can do that with any of our add-ons. Now, do keep in mind, though, if you do try to grow your own elderberry plants, they can grow as high as 12 feet. So you got to plant those correctly. They do love moist, well-drained soil and plenty of sunshine. So do consider that before you plant your elderberry. 
Next up, we're going to talk about lemon balm. I happen to love working with it. It is definitely one of my favorites and we do sell a fair amount of lemon balm. It has been known to aid insomnia and anxiety, which is why I prefer to drink it in the morning. Lemon balm is a tea that will make you a happy camper. Now it is part of the mint family. So remember me saying, if you decide to plant mint, make sure you plant it in a pot. It is one of those species that will go everywhere. Now it's going to look very, very similar to your mint plant. Keep in mind though, it should really smell like lemon and obviously not like mint. Lemon bulb is easily propagated by plant division. So that's another one to share with a friend or family or neighbor. And all you need to do are the cuttings or the seeds. It does grow best in full sun but it also is gonna grow well in part shade, just like that mint plant. It is very easy to grow, but of course my recommendation is in a pot. <laughs> Next up friends is ginger. Now of course here at Sub Rosa Tea, we sell ginger root. So it is interesting to think about all of the varieties, all the different parts of the plant that we steep to enjoy a cup of tea. And ginger is one that we're gonna stick with the roots here. It loves filtered sunlight, rich, moist soil. It loves warm weather and humidity, which by the way, we get a lot of humidity up in Northern Ohio, but it's very seasonal for us. Even though ginger is a tropical plant, it can grow easily in your own backyard in a sheltered spot with filtered sunlight. So you're gonna have to think that one through before you try to grow your own ginger. Now, plain ginger, as we all know, is fabulous for upset tummies, but this tea that we sell is triple root. Triple root has got ginger, turmeric, and sarsaparilla. Those are three roots that are all excellent for joint mobility. So I would definitely consider this a spice tea as ginger is. It's definitely very spicy, but like I said, it is on the list of easy to grow plants. Kayla just said, do you have a lemon ginger? I'm lo loving the flavors right now. Kayla, great question. So I'm going to make sure, I hope that you hear me say this because it is one that we get asked for all the time, lemon and ginger. Next 10 days from now in the Willy Wonka collection, we will have a tea called Even the Grass is Edible. I know that sounds like a really crazy name and you might not want to think about drinking this tea, but it is from the movie, okay? Even the grass is edible, is from the movie. That tea is a lemongrass ginger, okay? Everybody loves it if they're brave enough to drink it because I named it something crazy. So I hope everyone will tell all their friends that we do have this great lemongrass ginger tea, even though we named it something funny but it is a uh, themed and limited edition. So do look for the Willy Wonka the collection to come out soon. A part of the ginger, we also love the idea of growing our own strawberry plants. We have this wonderful white tea that has both a strawberry and ginger in it. Now here in Ohio, strawberries grow just about everywhere. They're very, very easy to grow. And the leaves are known to be good for joint pain. It grows best in full sun and will with well draining soil. Strawberries should be one of the very first things that you plant early in the season because they normally, uh, the berries are gonna be ripe here where I live in June. Not only can you enjoy the fruit, of course, but the leaves as well. Speaking of berries, you might want to consider raspberries. Raspberries are also very good, very easy to grow, and we do sell a raspberry lemoncello, which has the raspberry leaf in it and lemongrass. Raspberry leaf tea is again known to boost your immune system increases metabolism, 
helps regulate hormones and helps the ease the symptoms of colds and flus and inflammation. I know that it sounds like way too many fabulous things, but I will literally say of the people that have reported back to me giving their teenage daughters or preteen daughters the raspberry lemoncello tea, which again is completely caffeine free, that they have noticed a different during their monthly, okay, cycle. So it really is helpful to regulate hormones. Also shown to affect menopausal women. Crazy hormones at that time in your life, the raspberry leaf has definitely been shown to help that. Keep in mind though that we do recommend at least four cups of day to actually notice a real difference. The thing about growing your own raspberries though, is you do need to make sure you pick the right plant for your region. There are many of them, but it is very simple to use your, um, your both the tea leaves and of course the berries, the raspberry leaves to use as tea and of course the berries. Next up, next up, dandelions. Dandelions. So we sell dandelion again as an add-on. Dandelions are an amazing plant that are completely full of powerful nutrition. They're said to stimulate both the gallbladder and the liver and help reduce water weight. So a lot of people have been advertising dandelion as a detox tea. Well, guess what? We sell it all 12 months out of the year. Um, it really does help with kidneys. I have done a full 30 minute speech where I do a really deep dive on exactly how dandelion tea has been shown to positively affect your kidneys and your kidney function and to help people with kidney stones. But you do want to make sure that you gather your leaves when they are both tender and young because the older leaves can be quite bitter. We do have a tea called cold and flu. I used to sell this only during the winter. However, this has been one of our best sellers this year. I think it's because it tastes so stinking good. I know I called it cold and flu, which really isn't on brand for me. I like to come up with really interesting names that describe the flavor. This one, I was just like, it is what it is. It's good for colds and flus. This has got just about every single herb and flower that we've talked about today. It's got peppermint, got the rose, got the ginger, got, and now we're going to be talking about thyme. Thyme is up next. There are actually over 300 different varieties of thyme. Thyme again is in the mint family. What does that mean? Who remembers? That is right. Plant it in a pot because it's going to spread like crazy. Now, in my opinion, I love the thyme spreads. You're going to want to plant enough of it so you're not just drinking it for tea leaves, but allow it to flower. Who knows what loves those thyme flowers? Who knows? Bees. Bees absolutely do love thyme, and we love to keep our flying friends happy don't we? Thyme can be difficult to grow from seed though, so you'll want to buy the best plant for your region, which again is a great reason not to go to a mega mart, but to go to a local greenhouse, really talk to the owner, whoever works there, make sure that you tell them exactly what your yard looks like, you know, so you can pick the right thyme plant for you, but definitely make sure you, you grow it in a container. <laughs> Absolutely. Now friends, I would say this tea doesn't even need me to do a video on it. This tea is absolutely gorgeous. This is our hibiscus. I actually steep this right in room temperature water. I love hibiscus tea so, so much. If you didn't know what it looks like, it does look like this here. These are our hibiscus leaves, flowers hibiscus flowers. So if you haven't heard me say it before, hibiscus is known to help lower your blood pressure. 
Um, it's definitely the flower that makes a completely amazing tea. They'll add a pop of color to your garden, which is always fun. They have these gorgeous red blooms that will add beauty to your space, which always makes me really happy. Now keep in mind, again, with hibiscus, there are over 200 species that will grow in the United States. So this is a plant that you'll need to um, decide what to plant in your area based on how, where you live. It does enjoy full sun though. So if you're a very shady yard that might not work in well-drained soil, but can also be grown in containers, you're going to want to make sure to prune your plant every spring. Now, hibiscus is absolutely one of our best sellers and one that we absolutely love to mix into our flavors. Seasonally, we have our jelly beans available. Jelly beans tea does really taste like a handful of fruit jelly beans and it's got hibiscus, it is a green tea. One of our also very popular sellers right now is our polyjuice potion. I know this is a very funny name, but it does have hibiscus and it does have a peach taste. So if you haven't tried that, you might wanna give that one a try. One that is making my entire kitchen smell is our passion tango. The passion tango, the passion tango here, it is passion fruit. I love this tea, but boy, does it smell fabulous. Oh my gosh, everything smells good with this passion tango. Like I said, it does have hibiscus and passion fruit. I was just talking about a friend with it. When she was pregnant, she, um, not pregnant, after she had her baby and she was nursing, she drank a lot of the passion fruit tea with coconut milk, calling it the pink drink. And what's good, like I said, not only does it have the passion fruit and the hibiscus, but it has raspberry leaf. So definitely recommended after pregnancy, the lemongrass in that recipe, in this tea blend is going to help with the fluids, which of course is the whole point that you wanna you know, produce as much breast milk as possible in order to feed your child or children. So definitely um, the passion tango is one that we recommend for that. But of course I didn't wanna call it that. I, you know, it tastes fabulous. <laughs> it really does, it tastes great and it is really fun. Just steep it hot, chill it, mix it with coconut milk, add berries if you feel like it. It is definitely a fabulous pink drink. Yes, it is. And for those of you who are interested, we do sell this. This is our Kyoto glass teapot. It is glass, it does make up to four cups, so you can easily make blooming tea, matcha, and loose leaf tea with the Kyoto here. Friends, this concludes my presentation today. I hope I've given you enough information to decide if you are the right person and now is the right time for you to grow your own tea garden. I wanted to once again say thank you for everyone for watching. I really do appreciate it, whether you have a green thumb, a brown thumb, or very little interest and you just love drinking tea. I appreciate that you hung out here with me. Thank you so much. I hope to see you back here on Sunday where, like I said, I'm going to do mocktails and cocktails. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, I hope you have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Thank you, friends. Have a great night.